I'm Adele Fox and um, I'm just introducing my Intermediate to Advanced course which is available on oaim.ie and uh, in this course we will be covering uh, various aspects of learning the concertina to an intermediate and advanced standard including um, finger work, uh, on, particularly on the low notes, um, ornamentation, um, playing notes uh, on the outside row which would include B flat and uh, uh, low C sharp and stuff and also um, uh, one or two longer tunes and, and um, more unusual tunes. Um, on this particular video I'm going to teach you a tune that I composed myself, a reel, um, called Nana Joes and um, this reel is on, in this reel I'm going to focus on some of the finger work around uh, the low G, low B and low A which can be tricky to, to play together. Um, so I'm going to start with, I'm going to play the tune for you twice through. teach you the tune in two bar segments um, I will repeat each segment a few times then and uh, so that you can learn it with me um, the first two bars are okay so um, I'm going to show you what I'm doing there um, I'm using high D and E on the right hand side And in the next bars, so first of all, I'm cutting the E there with a G just above it, and then when I'm going from low B down to low A, I use my third finger on low A on the outside row. So I go. That's to avoid, avoid jumping with my little finger from B to low A, which is quite tricky. It's very common to use your third finger for low A on the outside row. Okay, um, so. Okay, so the first two bars all together. And then the next bit is starts with a low B and then a D roll. So for the D roll, I'm going D, high D, B, D, all on the pull. Okay, I'll try that one more time. 
time. Okay, and when you're leading into the second part, um, there's a few ways of doing this. Um, I frequently get asked um, what system I play on of concertina. And really, to be honest, there is obviously a Wheatstone system and a Jeffries system, and I'm playing a Jeffries at the moment. But what that all the the one difference that people need to remember the only one difference is where the C sharp is. Um, on the Jeffries, uh, the C sharp uh, on the push is with my second finger on the outside row. Okay, I'm covering up these top buttons just so that you don't think I'm using them. Okay, so um, it's with my second finger on the outside row. And then I also have one with my first finger, which is on the pull. And then that one's on the push. On the Wheatstone, it can be op the opposite. The first finger can be push and the second finger can be a pull C sharp maybe. But it does, it, it varies. Every single instrument is different. And there are some Jeffries that have it the other way around because what, you, what a lot of people end up doing is just opening up the instrument taking out their reed pan and swapping around where they see sharp reeds are uh, suiting, suiting what they're used to. Um, so that is the only difference. And uh, uh, so you will notice me sometimes playing my C sharp on the push with my second finger and the first finger with my pull. Okay. Um, so the next bar five, uh, the lead in note is a C sharp and you've just finished on a B. So if you can play your C sharp with your second finger, like I can, you can go move very smoothly from B on the pull to C sharp. Or you can go from B on the left hand side, with the, which is the second row on the push, and then over to C sharp on the, the push with your first finger. Okay, so uh, leading from C sharp, um, the next two bars are. Okay, I'll do that again. Okay, so here I am using my, my high D on the left hand side. And what I want your, you to remember about fingering is that there's no uh, wrong way to, to finger a tune um, as long as you're not cross fingering, which means jumping from one button to the next with the same finger. And the second rule is try to avoid doing big long phrases where your bellows are going out too far or your bellows are going in like that and you've got no air left, okay? But if you stick to avoiding cross fingering and avoiding long phrases of pull, 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 or push, 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 um, then there is no wrong way to finger a gym. And most concertina players will finger it completely differently from each other. So um, yeah, the, the next two bars again are, Okay, and one more time. And then, like in, in bar two, in bar six is the same. From low B to low A. Okay, and then the last two bars are. So you've got your B, low B, up to a D roll again. Okay, so the first part, I'm going to play all of it together and you can try play along. One, two. The first two bars sound like this. Okay, so you'll know 
some fingering issues there with B to C sharp. So remember what I said in the first part. If you've got a C sharp with your second finger on the right hand side, you can play B with your first into C sharp with your second finger. If you've only got a C sharp with your first finger, you're going to have to go over to the second finger, B on the left hand side to lead in. Otherwise you're going to be jumping with the same finger and you want to avoid doing that. At this point as well in your playing, you should be very, very comfortable with where your two Bs are, your two C naturals, your two high Ds and your two high Es, and your three As and your three Gs that are on your instrument. And the best way to get comfortable with all of these is to uh, get yourself a good map of the concertina and also to practice scales in different fingering sequences. They're very good exercises. So, uh, the second part. One more time. And then the next two bars are push there which is the same button as F because I felt that my bellows was going out really far and I needed some air so I um, pushed in the D and then pushed the air button with it so try and practice that subtle like it's like a subtle movement just you're not fully pressing the air button but you, you're giving a little tip every time you need some air and uh, try and work that into your tune so that you can do it kind of inconspicuously and you don't hear a big puff every time you need to press your air button so okay the first four bars of the second part Two bars are F A are the leading notes into the next bar, so what I did there was I played the D on the pull on the right hand side and C sharp with my first finger because I have it on the pull on it with my first finger. there would be to, to C sharp. So. There are numerous ways of fingering that passage but uh, B to C sharp with your first and first finger on B and C sharp on the second or like I've been saying earlier on the tune you can go for it to B on the left hand side so you can go where we'll play the whole tune at a nice steady pace and um, we'll play each part twice. I will count us in. One, two. 